<laughs> well, I'm going to keep things raw. I'm going to bring a good friend of mine up who, uh, he's done the Letterman show before. He was supposed to be on the Letterman show uh, two days ago, and he got bumped. Oh, but no, that's okay, though, because they paid him, and they announced his name a couple hundred times. So, uh, so that's cool, and he gets to go on next Tuesday, which I believe is the 22nd. So if you want to see him on David Letterman, you go and flip on your TV that night. But right now, we scooped him. The Cable Comedy Show has scooped him. Please, a nice round of applause, Mr. Jonathan Katz. Thank you, Mike. Great. Thank you. I had a scary experience today. I woke up with, uh, with no sensation in my right hand. You ever do that? You sleep in a weird position, you cut off the circulation. I tried moving my fingers and nothing happened. With my left hand, I pinched my right hand. No feeling. I took a pen from the night table. I pricked my finger. My wife screamed at the top of her lungs. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I used to have uh, I used to have trouble sleeping, so I joined Insomniacs Anonymous, and uh, now I have trouble sleeping because I get all these phone calls at four in the morning. I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that parallel lines do meet. So, uh, <laughs> but they're discreet. So, uh, now, I've always been intrigued by dreams. I think it was Freud who said that we do the things in our dreams we're afraid to do when we're awake. And we're happiest when our dreams and our lives coincide, which is why once a week I bank naked. I just got back from San Francisco. I was working in the clubs out there, and I went to Berkeley on my day off. It's, not, it's too easy. To, I haven't been there since the turbulent 60s. I was driving around Berkeley, and I, and I see a sign alongside the road that says, End Construction. Kind of a bizarre cause, but I was glad the spirit was still alive. So, uh, so. No, I, I like to travel, but it's tough with a new baby at home. I have a little girl, and uh, I was down south in Atlanta, Georgia, and I see a young mother carrying a baby my daughter's age. I said, excuse me, ma'am, I'm from Boston. I haven't seen my kid in 10 days. If I could hold your child for one second, it would mean a great deal to me. She said, that's very sweet. I don't see why not. I said, I haven't seen my wife in about 10 days. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. I'm like the world's least likely guy to, uh, to ever cheat on his wife because I, I know exactly how that feels. I, a long time ago, I walked in on a girlfriend of mine and, and uh, found her in bed with another guy. And uh, just to save face, I said, uh, I think we should start seeing other people. <laughs> so Mike was, uh, was nice enough to mention, I made my, my TV debut recently on the David Letterman show. I was terrified. My first time on TV, I, w I was afraid that women would recognize my voice from the telephone. <laughs> but, uh, It actually worked out okay. I celebrated the next day. I went out and I bought a video cassette recorder, and I don't go to the movies anymore now. I rent them. This is the trend. By the year 2000, one out of three American homes will have an usher. <laughs> no, I, I love all kinds of gadgets. I, I bought a home computer for $1,500 with extra memory, and then I find out for another 10 bucks you can get one that also holds a grudge. <laughs> Sometimes I think that technology gets in our way of enjoying life's simple pleasures. I remember when I was a kid, the thrill of getting up in the morning, running downstairs, pouring the milk in the cereal just to hear that snap, crackle, and pop. Now they have Rice Krispies with Dolby. <laughs> I think you folks can sense I'm, uh, I'm under a little bit of pressure tonight. Shows in my face. I, I have to make that big decision tomorrow that a lot of us have had to make recently. I have to pick my, uh, my primary long distance service. <laughs> and there's a new one. They claim they can cut AT&T's rates by 80%, but they decide who you talk to.
I'm a native New Yorker. Anybody from New York City? Oh, yeah. You're not going to win anything, so relax. <laughs> you have your health, and for that you should be grateful. I moved here about six minutes, six minutes ago, and I am thrilled to be here. No, no. <laughs> but six months ago. Just testing you. Sharp crowd. I like that. My last day in New York, I was mugged, and that is a scary experience. The, uh, the things that race through your mind in that situation, phrases you haven't used since you were a kid, like, I'll be your best friend. <laughs> that one actually backfired. I uh, have this new best friend now. <laughs> Most of the time I lived there, I was single, and it's a tough place for a single guy because women are very suspicious of men in New York. It's true, the only way to make eye contact with a woman in New York City is to walk about three feet behind her at night. I found a great pair of shoes here last time I was in New York, but they only had them in a size nine, so I lied to the guy. <laughs> this has not been a great day for me. I, uh, I don't know if Mike mentioned this. I, uh, I lost my hair today. <laughs> my fault, I had a bad habit of flipping my head back to keep the hair out of my eyes. <laughs> exactly, one time too many. I shouldn't complain. Life has been wonderful to me lately. I'm uh, proud to say three months ago I became a father. And uh, this is probably, thank you very much. This has got to be the most, the most powerful experience that a man can have to witness the, the birth of your child. I had read about it, I had seen pictures, but to be there and to see the stork penetrate the uterus is uh, <laughs> unpleasant. I had to do it. I was trained. I went through natural childbirth classes. So. Great place to meet chicks, by the way, if, uh, if you're into the full-figured gal. I spent yesterday in New York with my, uh, with my little baby and my 80-year-old father. I was kind of proud. I was the only one able to control their own bladder. Shouldn't kid the guy, 80 years old, is getting divorced. My stepmother's trying to get custody of me and my older sister. <laughs> I, I love being a dad, it's a blessing, it really is. Well, it's a blessing and a curse, I guess. It's a, a blurse, but still, I think it's a more natural phenomenon than being a husband. I'm married only two years, I'm still going through that awkward stage where you realize your life is basically over. It's true, I don't care how powerful the initial attraction, at some point the lust is replaced by this incredible longing for sleep. And, uh, my wife and I are going through this. We've read all the sex manuals. We've tried both positions. And, uh, she insists on turning out the lights before we make love, which does not bother me. It's the hiding that seems so cruel. I made the mistake of listening to the news on my way here tonight. Always a bad move if you do comedy. And, uh, I'm going to be doing some of that later. Big thing that was the nuclear arms race. I was out drinking last night and I got into a very morbid conversation with a construction worker, a big guy. And I said to this guy, look, you hear the sirens go off. The missiles are on their way. You've got 20 minutes to live. What are you going to do? He said, I am going to make it with anything that moves. <laughs> He asked me what I was going to do. I, I said, I'm going to try and keep perfectly still. <laughs> of course, the number one killer in this country is heart disease. The, the major cause of heart disease we now know is stress. The sad thing, stress is something we inflict on ourselves. I bought a quart of milk today. I looked at the container. It said, must sell by April 20th. I don't need that kind of pressure. I'm on the phone all day trying to unload the milk. Thank you very much. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Katz.